this whole situation has been nothing but caring and supportive people. Hey guys, it is Sunday night. And I filmed my last update on Friday, which was two days ago. I did decide to make that a separate video because it was getting really long. But this is basically going to be the second half of the miscarriage journey in live time. This is like me literally going for it right now. So the last two days were pretty much a breeze. I kind of thought it was over, but... Turns out it's not. I do have my appointment tomorrow on Monday. And wait, it's not even booked. Oh, the hospital said that they will call me. The clinic will call me. And we'll go get an ultrasound and blood's done. So hopefully I can get in tomorrow. I will give them a call if they don't call me by 10, 11 o'clock. Because things are getting really, really intense. Okay, so, right now, I'm literally having, like, contractions. I guess the only way I can kind of explain it is, like, early onset labour. The only difference is with early labour, they're further apart. These are, like, pretty close together, but they're not as intense. They're close together, but not as intense. It's enough to like make me kind of want to curl up in a ball, but I can still talk through them. And it's like my uterus is literally going on like this right now. So it's coming in waves and it's my whole uterus and I even am suffering light encroach. So it's not fun. <laughs> but the weird thing about this all is there is no blood. I pretty much stopped bleeding for the last two days spotting on and off tiny bit of like blood this morning but i had a bath to try and help with the pain and there's no blood and it's been like a few like half an hour to an hour since i popped a new pad on to monitor it so i don't know why i'm getting like these contractions without blood because they're like the rest of the contents will empty out and that's why there's contractions but it has not been like that for me <sighs> so i'm kind of just it just feels like i'm waiting it's very painful but i did want to update you on our little hospital visit because i don't feel like i talked about it much that that day I'm 95% sure that we passed the baby through and we even asked the doctors. Obviously, they couldn't be 100%, but to me, I literally stared at it for hours and it looked exactly like diagrams and it looked like the baby. And it was measuring the same size, which was 7 millimeters. Of course, I could be completely wrong. And we could go in for the scan tomorrow and the baby still be in there. We'll probably just like see how things go and take it from there. Hey guys, it is like 11.30. And I have the worst cramps. I say that, but it's still nothing compared to labor which is really intense and I feel really uncomfortable and before I felt really dizzy and I felt like I was gonna vomit and I just felt like lethargic and hot and it wasn't fun and I had to go lie down and there is light red bleeding but it's not heavy at all and it's not like stringy and I don't want to take anything for it because I need to like be able to track this it's like the only way I can track it at the moment because bleeding is not it's just not something I can track so I don't know if this is like over 
I don't know if it's an infection. It is the next day and I am heading in to the hospital again. They're going to do a scan and bloods just to follow up anything. Last night was really bad. I had really, really intense cramps. Um, I woke up with cramps again, so it's like more like period cramps. Last night was like mild contractions, so we'll just have to see what the scan says and take it from there. Please, please, please be good results because I'm just like so emotionally drained. All right, so I thought I would update you on basically today. So I had my appointment at the hospital and we were going over bloods and we were going over like the ultrasound so they had to do an internal ultrasound and I feel really defeated I'm just really disappointed because the baby is still in there wedged in and it doesn't look like the baby's moving and my body hasn't even fully recognized that like the baby hasn't got a heartbeat and it hasn't recognized that you know that it's technically not pregnant anymore and my hormones are slowly dropping but they said it probably won't even recognize until they drop to the hundreds they're still around 4,000 my HCG so it's been two weeks it will be two weeks tomorrow and I just I just feel really defeated because I thought I really 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 thought that you know I really thought that I passed the baby through and in a way is heartwarming but it's also really hard emotionally because I just feel a bit defeated I just really wanted to do this naturally because it felt like my last bit of control and I just feel disappointed that I can't so after like talking to the nurse and the doctor for literally what felt like hours I decided that we're going to go through with the DNC which is scary but I just it's been two weeks and I just don't know if I can handle this anymore or emotionally it's been so much harder than what I actually expected and it's so hard waiting and they ended up giving me a whole bunch of support it's called oh, it's called bears of hope and they have like lots of pamphlets and things and groups to reach out to for parents who have experienced a miscarriage or um, lost an infant I haven't completely gone through all of this but they gave me a teddy bear as well it's just like a lot to try and take in and it's a lot to think about and especially when it comes down to the risks of the surgery and I know that they can be minor but I can't help but worry about these things. I didn't realise how much information there is. I just feel like I'm bombarded with information and decisions that I have to make and it's just like really hard I'm I feel like I'm lost for words at the moment and I just feel so depleted I feel so depleted of emotions and physically depleted and I just I just didn't realize what goes into having a miscarriage I'm going into surgery at 7 30 in the morning I don't think I'll be able to document anything I wasn't going to document in the hospital I just didn't feel comfortable with that and as real and raw as I want to be you know of course it's like confidentiality and privacy things that 
I have to account for and but I'll basically you know talk you guys through behind the scenes because again I want this to be informative and I I just like had no idea I had no idea some of the stuff that they're talking to me about so I thought I would talk to you guys about the DNC procedure just in case you don't know what it was don't know what it is because I um like I knew what it was but I didn't really know what it was if you know what I mean I didn't know the exact things that go into it um so just a little disclaimer I don't know if this is going to apply to your country this is like according to Australia <clears throat> and in particular um the queensland state so i'm not sure if it's different state to state and i'm not sure if it's different country to country <clears throat> so i guess my advice is contact your health practitioner and discuss with them but just to give you an idea just in case you do need to make this decision so basically a dnc is called a dilation and curatage and it's where they put you under general anesthetic. Apparently it's meant to be a really quick procedure. The doctor takes about 15 to 20 minutes. However, you're most likely to be in day surgery anywhere between four to six hours, depending on the practice. They basically go through with a minor suction machine and clear out the uterus. Um, there is a small risk of infection and um, you can actually get scar tissue on your um, uterus wall and there could be damage to your cervix. Um, they are meant to take all of the precautions to minimize these risks. I have to take some medication tomorrow what happens is that medication will basically kickstart any i guess early labor symptoms and it's meant to ripen the cervix the reason why they suggest doing this is so they don't damage your cervix and it just helps with the whole procedure. I guess some of the specific risks that they mention here is infection, bleeding, um, complications to the womb, like the scar tissue, um, fertility, um, difficult conceiving. Um, you can tear the cervix. It can this is the one that really scares me the most and they did say that it's a very 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 small chance but still that there's a chance to this happens and if you i don't want to scare anyone but i'm being real and raw here and this is something that actually scares me they can actually puncture your organs that are around the cervix like your bladder your ovaries Again, the risks are very small, but they're still there and it's something to consider when you are considering this. And that really scares me, but I'm trying not to think about it too much. So the more rare risks, but again, still risks, so it's something that you have to consider, is you can get a blood clot, which could possibly lead to a stroke or a heart attack or death. So if you do have um, like a medical history that where you suffer from blood clots or anything related under that of course your doctor will go through this with you then you know that's something to consider i don't really have any major major medical history so i've made the informed decision to go ahead with this procedure and isaac will be the one taking me to the surgery and picking me up he's actually not allowed to go in and um they do recommend that you have a support person with you for 24 hours and they say it can be a few weeks until you start feeling like yourself and one thing that i wanted to quickly mention is i didn't even realize 
that postpartum depression can kick in. I don't know why it just didn't come across, but you know, given your hormones, they're no longer going to be like maintaining a pregnancy, so, you, so of course they're going to drop. And it's just something to look out for if you are prone to depression. I did get postpartum depression with Theodore, so it's something that I just have to um, keep a close eye on. They gave so much support support like guidance cards I don't know why but this is like really triggering but this is something that I'm sure like if you are going through this this is something that kind of sticks with you but um our clinic like I said has a bunch of support documents but one that really resonates with me is like when people compare your grieving and they have like a little example is just be glad you didn't get to know her this way you don't have to suffer the grief and I feel like with early miscarriages people literally do that they just think oh you're young you're healthy you can have another baby and it just hurts so incredibly much to just like swallow it swallow the grief and because it's not like you can just replace that baby that baby's always gonna have like the spot in your heart and like everybody grieves differently and every body is affected differently and it, I know like it's hard because I'm literally going for this right now but if you are too like your grief is so valid and it comes in so many different levels and don't let anyone tell you that you are not allowed to grieve the way you grieve because everybody grieves differently and handles things differently I think like at the hospital I held it in pretty well <clears throat> until they gave me the Bears of Hope bag which I want to show you guys because it made me cry and I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I've cried so much they gave me this little bag, it's called the Bears of Hope and it's Pregnancy and Infant Loss Support Foundation I actually haven't gone through the bag so we'll be going through it together <laughs> Okay, I think I'll cry. <laughs> but like, you know, it's really sad because these bags are put together by mums and dads who have also lost the babies. This is like a little frame and it says, A life so brief. A child so small, you had the power to touch us all. And just like the stuff like that. Oh my god, we haven't even got through the bag. <laughs> and I have like a little CD with songs, I'm guessing. Track one says it's Live Among the Angels. Track two is left behind, and track three is waiting on the day. Yeah, this is a little candle. It basically says bears of hope, pregnancy, and infant loss support. I think you can light it as a little remembrance, which is a really nice way to say your goodbyes. They also have like tons of. Support, support for dads, which is so important because the dads have to go with this too. And I feel like everybody thinks about the mum, but the dads have to go with it as well. They have seeds that you can plant as well, which is really beautiful. They have lots of different ways you can 
remember your baby or read some because this is something that I was really not sure about but they have a whole list here and it says name your baby regardless of whether you know the gender or not the name can always be chosen from the heart plant a garden tree of flowers which is what we kind of did when I passed a clot I was convinced that it was the baby <laughs> and we decided to plant it in our peace lily I just feel really defeated because we had done all that and the baby's still there but I think at the end of the day it's the thought that goes into it we haven't made the decision whether to take the baby home with us after the DNC because the nurse brought up some things that I didn't think about and she wasn't trying to be mean she was actually the most lovely nurse ever but I just like didn't I just like don't even know if I should say it here because it's really hard to hear but I think you just have to go with what is right for you and your partner and I think it's something that me and Isaac have to discuss and I don't know if we'll share what we did do end up doing or if we want to keep it between us I still I don't know like there's all these decisions that I have to make before tomorrow and I just I don't know but they also say you can donate a bear of hope in honor of your baby which I really want to do that because they have a little bear here this bear is from Xavier Jordan who is a baby who passed away on the 20th of December 2012 it just like breaks my heart says you can write a letter to your baby you can hold a special memorial service create a scrapbook engrave jewelry name a star in honor of your baby get a tattoo keep a journal and write poetry and letters and feelings you can even purchase a recognition life certificate they even give you this journal so you can write your thoughts in I mean, through this whole situation there's been nothing but caring and supportive people and it just goes to show that like your community is really that to support you and you don't have to be alone for this process <laughs> it doesn't have to be taboo and there's nothing wrong with you know announcing a pregnancy early because why should we have to go through this alone <laughs> because this is like one of the hardest things that I've ever done <laughs>